Hey, welcome back to After the Episode, brought to you by Line Cutters, the adjustable ring that cuts fish in line. Oh, well, hello, how you doing? Nice to meet you here. Seems like I always meet you here on Fridays. Uh-huh. Welcome back to After the Episode. Oh, we come off a long run. We went from here to Shreveport, Louisiana, to Northeast Texas, Jefferson, down to San Antonio, and then back to Pensacola uh, in one weekend. Holy mackerel. Yeah. Left Friday, we were back by Monday. So we're whooped, to say the least. We're taking a look at Thursday's episode, yesterday's episode, right now, and we're going to kind of go through it. Uh, you didn't come with me on this day. No, I didn't. Why? This is when I was sick. Mm. I was sick in bed. Made me stay home. That's right, I did. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't miss much fish-wise, as y'all can tell. No. Looked fun, though, either way. Well, I started out at one of our honey holes north of here in Pace, Florida. Up the river, good winter spot. Started out by searching, and all, we always search with gulp because we have so much faith in it. It's got so much smell. Mm-hmm. Five-inch jerk shad is what I was throwing. I was using a little bit more of a finesse rig. I had my McCain uh, broken back with the Abu Garcia Pro Max. And this is a $69 reel. It's not very expensive. It's graph a lot of graphite and plastic, very light. And I had a Strin 12 pound or 15 pound test mono leader. I was trying to really finesse it and go light and really search these fish out. To no avail. Didn't have much luck, Tracy. It's because you left your good luck charm home. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing, not one bump. Well, it had rained. <laughs> Pushing the Revo out there. I can actually do a lot more fancy stuff with that thing with the Amas on than I can when it's when they're not on. Looks like you went the first time, trip, you used the Amas. The second part of the trip, you didn't use right, the Amas. Right, right. First part of the trip, I, I figured I might be standing and going a little more crazy. But uh, second part of the trip, I didn't bring them because I wanted to just speed and I didn't want to have to haul them down to the water's edge and it's a little more of a haul, and I wanted to go fast and far, and when I got to the flat, I decided to try to stay in the Revo, and actually stood pretty easily. Yeah? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. If it's skinny and there's no wind, I can pull it off. Hmm. If there's any kind of wind or anything, I can't do it. Revo's How too skinny. How long did you stay over here? You didn't stay long. I was there about 40 minutes. <laughs> I, I would have been upset. I'd have been I like, know. I'm staying. I was like, this is awesome. I'm staying. Well, when I throw when I throw hard for 45 minutes and I don't get one bump from a pinfish and I've tried four or five areas, I'm out. I have no reason to stay there. So I loaded it up and I went over to one of our honey holes right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, a summertime spot. It's a big grass flat in Gulf Breeze, Florida. We call it the Oaks. We call it the Oaks. Yeah, you've seen it in several episodes, but I really love the spot. And although the grass flats aren't warm yet, I thought I would give it a shot and see if there was anything there. Now, I try a lot of different depths on this flat and I don't do any good. I don't find any fish until later uh, when I go about a mile and a half down, I find a flat, uh, a, a weight fisherman. He's really moving slow in about a foot of water and he said he had seen a few reds. So I start really slowing down and looking on the flat and I'll be darned if I didn't have three redfish chase my jerk shad back to the boat. It was later in the morning now, so they were starting to the flat was warming up is what was going on. Mm-hmm. Starting to see a lot of bait, starting to see redfish. Mm-hmm. So even though they weren't super aggressive and I didn't catch any, they are starting to move up on the grass flats, which is good news for us here. Grass flats are one of our meat and potato areas, no matter where they are. And uh, we fish them all spring, summer, fall. I see you got to play in your hammock. Yeah. Which brings me to the next issue. <laughs> if you watch the show, you know we love hammocks. I love hammocks. I don't know about this one. But I, well, I like my hammock. <laughs> this is the hammock that I used in this episode. And this hammock comes from where? Walmart. Walmart. I actually it's traded Teresa's brother an old fishing pole for this <laughs> cheapy Walmart hammock. It's like $22. A hammock. It's the equipped travel hammock. From Walmart. But it, it'll hold two people. Mm-hmm. It's like a double. I put some, I went in the garage and just found some clips and just stuck anything on there. 
This is not something you want to do when you're hiking and stuff. It's way too much weight. I do that for convenience in the yard. And this is my yard hammock. This is my travel hammock are these Enos. This is the double nest. And this is a single nest. These are much lighter in weight. And I like to uh, bring these most of the time just because they are so much lighter. I use a lot of two inch or one inch, you know, straps. Nylon webbing. Yeah, nylon webbing. But in this video, you see me use this uh, rope that I got from Mariner Sales. This is a real high dollar sailing rope. And it's got a lot of strength and I use it when Teresa and I are, hang, are, are in one uh, hammock because it holds so much weight. But you'll see the knots I'm doing here. I wanted to show y'all I think this is called a... You see me carrying this little piece of PVC pipe. Two fingers here. Make a loop. Pull the rope back over on itself and pull the rope through. Then you can pick up a stick on the ground. I usually carry a little piece of PVC or a piece of stick. And you do it like that. You take your hammock and you can clip it behind the knot like this. And that will hold. And what that does is you can put hundreds of pounds of pressure on that and you can always pull this pin out and bam. You, when you have a piece of rope hanging from the tree you can decide exactly where you want that hammock to hang which makes it very versatile. That knot is very handy. I use it a lot now for all kinds of stuff. So you see me eating and uh, hanging out in the hammock. This is what we call day camping and, you, and we've done this before. We've actually cooked mm -hmm. and spent the heat of the day in the shade resting. And then when it starts to cool down again, we'll fish all the way till dark. And that's a great way to fish all day in the heat of summer. Because you get to eat a hot meal and you get to rest, take a nap. We did it in Destin and I think I fell asleep for like an hour, hour and a half. We ate, got in our hammocks and rested. And then went and fished the evening. And you're like, it's like you went home and took a nap. So in the heat of summer, the fishing slows down at lunchtime when it gets blazing hot. And it gets really generally hot. Generally speaking. Because From noon to three or so. So this is a good way to fish the entire day and not have to go home and rest. You can actually stay at the location with very minimal gear. Yeah, a little stove uh, with just alcohol and a tuna can, basically. And you can burn alcohol in a tuna can for 20 minutes. Then you can <clears> take <throat> soup or raviolis or whatever you, you can, can find in a can. Yeah, you can heat anything that way. You didn't have to load the kayaks and unload the kayaks or anything else. You just take a nap. And we call that day camping. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I was demonstrating here. Day camping is an amazing way to stay on location and then get right back on the fish and not have to leave. You don't have to go to a restaurant. You don't have to go home. I'm so sorry, I, was, I wasn't there. I was just about to leave. <laughs> and this kid come flying around the corner saying, I knew I'd find you, I knew I'd find you. And it turns out they were driving down the highway. They saw the element, Elemente, and he begged his grandma to pull over. His friend's grandma. His friend's grandma had driven him down here, here from Georgia. And he begged her to turn around, and they said, you'll never find him. He took off running down the beach till he found me. It was hilarious. He went about a half a quarter mile down the beach. It's, it's always neat to to run into the What Nation and the people who watch the show. And yeah, to meet subscribers is super fun, which we did in San Antonio, too. We uh, threw up a little meet and greet, and uh, we didn't know the exact time of when we were going to be there, but we kind of kept everybody informed how, as best we could. I lost count. Yeah. I was just having fun talking there to everybody. There was a lot of people at Bass Pro. Thank you all for coming out to mm -hmm. San Antonio. Well, guys, thanks a lot for watching after the episode. Hey, if you do any kayak camping or if you do any day camping, what do you bring? When you stop and do a shore lunch, what do you eat? Do you use a chair? Do you lay on a blanket? Or do you bring a hammock? Comment below and let us know. We can all learn from it. Mm -hmm. How do you stay on the water all day? How do you take a break and what do you eat? I gotta pee. Shut up. <laughs>